as somebody working in carbon removal, I see all the various criticism of the, of the field, whether it's the big clunky machines, the practices that will need millions of farmers to adopt, or the crazy ideas for policy changes that seem almost impossible. And I want to encourage everybody to take a long view with these solutions. And so I have a story that begins 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was part of a startup competing for an X prize. We raised tens of millions of dollars and I got invited to speak on stage at TEDx Brussels to speak in front of 3,000 people. No, this wasn't about carbon removal. It was about digitizing the human body. I was part of a company called Scanadu, started by my brilliant friend, Walter de Brouwer. And our goal was to change the face of medicine forever by putting a doctor in your pocket through this new wacky device called a smartphone. <laughs> we had sensors for measuring your heart rate, for measuring the electrical signal that your heart gives off as it, as it beats, for measuring the blood oxygenation of your body, of measuring your body temperature, of tracking all these indicators and your symptoms to figure out how you were doing. Yesterday, I finally got the first consumer device that integrates all those sensors. It's freaking awesome. It's the new Apple Watch. I got the red one and it does all the stuff I was talking about. It does heart rate and electrical signal coming off your heart. It does blood oxygenation. Back then, a decade ago, most doctors didn't think this was possible. Putting a doctor in your pocket, not only did they think it was not possible, they also thought that if we did bring together these sensors and this information about your body, that that would actually potentially put people, they call them patients, it would put patients in harm's way because, well, doctors are the ones that know everything. It makes me think about the progress of technology over all that time. I remember working on the, uh, the ECG sensor, so the ability to pick up the, the electrical signal of your heart. We were trying to build a small device and the, the size of the electrode, the metal contact that you needed in order to accurately pick up the, the signal, the electrical signal from the heart, was we had a, we had a hard time making it uh, small enough to fit on the device, but still big enough to actually pick up the signal. And what's crazy is Apple has done that with this little, uh, thing on the, on the crown, this little black dot, uh, that is what you need to press. That's the electrode. Scanadu ultimately blew up and some of the team ended up at Apple or other medical device companies. We started something, we didn't get to finish it, but Apple came along and other companies are coming along and, and picked it up and turned to something that, this is super cool. That's what 10 years can do. The who, the what can all change. This is why with carbon removal, we need to take a step back and be able to think about the future. Something that's clunky, expensive, energy intensive today can tomorrow be on your freaking wrist. That is what we need to bring into the spirit of carbon removal today, to the work that's happening in this industry. Try and figure out how you can change your mindset about how solutions evolve. And maybe if you're already thinking about the future and you're happy with how things are going, maybe you can even take it a step further and look for those weird, odd, wacky things that are happening today and to think about how might those actually be a part of the solution. This is why building an inclusive industry isn't an afterthought. It's how we're gonna get there. Bringing in women, focusing on environmental justice at the earliest stages of creating new solutions. This is how we're going to build that future. Building in an equitable way is fundamental to the challenge of carbon removal. Even in other areas of climate, Experts continue to get it wrong in terms of the falling costs of solar power, the falling costs of lithium ion batteries. I met an expert at the World Bank focused on lithium ion batteries who said that they never would have predicted the prices that you see for energy storage today, even looking 15 years into the future. They never thought prices would be this low so soon. And that's why we need to have this big long-term thinking about all the different pieces of carbon removal that we'll need. It's an entire industry, not just one solution. For every company trying to capture molecules of carbon from the air, we need another one that figures out what to do with it and another one that figures out how to store it. So every time I look at my Apple Watch, a little part of me is gonna think back to the early days of Scanadu, 
when doctors told us this was impossible or even dangerous. I think about Scandu, I think about Apple and the Apple Watch, and I think about the companies and the founders who are applying to Airminer's Launchpad to create a new solution for carbon removal. To me, this goes back to playing a long game in carbon removal. We don't know who's gonna succeed or exactly what is going to work, but we know that we're in it together we're aiming to pull gigatons of carbon dioxide from the air and we need to do it fast.